What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Viking Vibes, the St. Joseph by the Sea High School Experience, a podcast and web series devoted to all things St. Joseph by the Sea High School. We're here today with something that, that I enjoy doing a lot. We're here today, and we're going to be doing an alumni spotlight. Joining us today in the studio, we have Mr. Michael Pinto, graduate of the class of 2006, and also to the dismay of one of our previous guests, and also the youngest sitting civil court judge in New York State as of late. As of January 1st. As of January 1st. We'll give our friend a few more weeks to hold the title. So Mr. Lantry, who was on the show previously, yes. we'll give him a couple more <laughs> weeks to, to expire. But before we get into it, I would just want to say, in addition to that esteemed title and having the honor of, of being your honor, right? You know, no pun intended. You've also done a lot of great things in the community outside of the courtroom and outside of politics. So you're responsible for the Minty Awards, which is something that is very near and dear to a lot of kids' hearts here in Staten Island, as well as parents. Mm -hmm because you're giving kids a platform to showcase their talents. You're also very involved in the community through work that you do with various nonprofits. So we want to talk about the judge. We want to talk about how cool that is. But before we get into all the big stuff, the abstract stuff, let's go backwards. Let's talk about the beginning. Tell us the Michael Pinto origin story. Michael Pinto origin story. You said I have 12 hours for this, right? Yeah, we can go all day. Okay, good. So born and raised, first off, let me say how happy I am to be on this. Thank you for inviting me. So happy to I have thought you. after my name was dropped about six times during Justice Lantry's uh, <laughs> show, this was the least that you could do to invite me on. And Wait till he sees yeah. it. <laughs> but I uh, was born and raised on the South Shore, went to Our Lady Star of the Sea, graduated there, class of 2002. And the natural progression for a lot of us back back in those days, and I'm sure still now, was myself included, to, <laughs> go from Our Lady Star of the Sea to St. Joseph by the Sea, as Monsignor Jeff Conway, who was such a great man and great priest, yeah. used to say, from sea to shining sea, Correct. that we would go. It was just natural. Many of my friends went to St. Joseph by the Sea, and really what set the course for me was auditioning my freshman year for the Viking Players production of Grease. Grease, okay. I had, I had caught the acting bug in eighth grade. Okay. The eighth grade Christmas show at Star of the Sea that year was a Grinch Christmas. Nice. And it was written by the students and the faculty. And since it was right after 9-11, I played Mayor Juliani. Oh, of God. of Whoville. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Only it would only be a Catholic school in the South Shore that yeah. would even create a character like that. But but let's go on. And and so that gave me the acting bug and when went to St. Joseph by the Sea, auditioned for Greece. And really the rest is history. I met so many wonderful friends, some that became my best friends. I met my wife doing that production and helped cement everything that I did in high school and now everything that I've done since. I want to just go back quickly to one thing. Now I know and I agree with you because I'm a 97. I'm dating myself here, but I think I graduated OLSS in 97. And like you said, the progression was to go. <laughs> but was there anything in your mind outside of the fact that a lot of your friends were going to see that kind of made you say, you know what, this is the right choice for me. I think also just the reputation that it had. And Monsignor Insaldi was another legendary figure. Absolutely. Yes. And so many people from my year had brothers and sisters, older brothers and sisters that had gone to see that really there was no other choice right. for high school. I went to see the other schools, but it was C you first. You did. That's what I wanted. I, I wanted to get that out of you. Yes. So you did go look. You went to open houses. You did some I stuff. I did. But okay. there was something about St. Joseph right. by the Sea that made it top of the list. And now when you were there because I'm, we're going to go into like the details of what they've done now, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure the last time you've been there, but I'll give you some details of what they've done as far as new work and what they, it's why. I got a tour a few weeks ago. Did you? I okay. Went. Absolutely incredible. We'll get right. to it later, but yeah. I've but, never but seen it. But my question like for that. you is, you know what it looks like now and what they've done specifically to the theater program? Mm -hmm. What did it look like then? Because then they had stuff, which not a lot of high schools even had, but what we have now is nowhere near it. But talk about yeah. what the production, what the studio was like, and what the what was the experience like when you were there? I had an absolutely fantastic experience. I had some amazing faculty members. Top of the list, top of anybody's list cool. has to be Mrs. Cummings. Oh, yes. There you go, Mrs. Cummings. She was, and I will tell her now, she failed me. The only test I ever failed in my <laughs> life was wow. freshman year, a pop quiz she gave me because I didn't study properly. Well, if you're going to fail any teacher, she would have been the one to fail because at least she was trying. She was tough. Yes. She wasn't a fly by night. She, Absolutely you were not. And you learned in her class yes. as yes. well. But I had so many uh, great faculty. And the I guess that was right a year or so after that the auditorium had opened up. Oh, it so is, it was actually while you were there. Okay. Yeah. And it was the only, and, and still is the only high school that has a dedicated theater for, right, for the performing arts. And it was absolutely incredible. The shows that we did then, talking about Greece, we had half the football team that was in that cast. Yeah, of course. And the... Auditorium was packed, standing room every night, and it, it was just such a, a community feel. 
that everyone in the school was was supportive of that, and it was just fantastic. So fast forward a little bit throughout the four years. You were involved in Greece in the very beginning, but then talk about how your love for theater production and, and all things related to that field grew while you were at SIG. Shows that we did Greece, then Crazy For You, Bye Bye Birdie, and Les Mis. Look at we you, were, you even remember the names. I, <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and that was the first show, or rather the first school to do Les Mis on Staten Island. Okay. I think it was still running on Broadway or had just closed. Well, that's a big deal. Even for but, people listening or watching that don't know anything about theater, they know that They name. know Les Mis. They've heard it, right. And it was it an absolutely beautiful production. And Did uh, you produce it? Is that why you're saying? No, oh. I was... <laughs> Were you behind the scenes I provided well? the comedic uh, relief Got in that sure. show. And everyone was dying around on stage. I came out, did a little number, and, that's and nice. made people laugh. Really, the productions were, were top-notch. When I started, it was run by an outside group, much like it is now, but the Actors' Workshop, which was okay. headed by Solange Bila and Tanya Nicholas, who has become one of my closest friends. And then it was taken over by Mr. Turner, who produced and directed and musically directed all yeah. the shows up until just recently. But they were absolutely fantastic. And I think... And the, one of the reasons I formed the Minties is because when you look at what theater does... For students at such an early age, they have to depend on each other. Right. Line memorization, who's bringing out my props, who's moving the sets, and the bonds that they form are unlike any other. And it, what makes theater kids so special because they are also the ones that excel academically right. and in all other areas as well. They were really some of the best students and friends that I had that were part One of One of the things the I thought you were going to say that you didn't was what he who will not be named named, <laughs> the Honorable Landry. He said that it opened his world to public speaking. So that's what he had said. That he yeah, but was, I was a ham all my life well, growing up. So. But it's different. But my point is that's it's a it's an entree for people who are a little more introverted to no, get absolutely. out and get experience and be comfortable doing something like this or being talking on stage. So how did you take your history of being a ham, as you put it? <laughs> how did you take that and then after graduation from St. Joe's, what was the next few steps and then eventually what got you to the Minties? Sure. So I want to talk about, I was involved in other things at sea besides oh, I theater. The, I thought that was the highlight. No, because if you on. see, so my career trajectory has been following Justice Lantry in various positions. Okay. He was editor-in-chief of the Viking Press his senior year. Right. And I was editor-in-chief wow. of the Viking Press my senior year. This is scary. <laughs> We're going to superimpose you or we'll put him right here. I was uh, a secretary of the student council. Interesting. Senior year as well, which was a lot of fun under Mr. Abruzzo, who was another yes, terrific faculty member. I made guest appearances on the TV studio. Guest appearances. I wasn't allowed to have my own they spot. They wouldn't give you the show? No, no. no. It happens. But, what <laughs> now, in retrospect, they're probably kicking themselves, right? But it's all right. But no, I just, it, it was such a fantastic and great experience. Such a wonderful four years. And from there, I went to Wagner College, where I was a government and politics major. Makes sense. With Pieces a, of puzzle coming yeah. together, right? <laughs> with a minor in journalism, okay. where I actually got to intern for NBC my senior year. That's uh, cool. Back when Brian I've Williams. known you a long time. I've had the pleasure of being your friend. I never knew that. That's well, very this is my fa one of my favorite experiences. This is my second favorite interview I've done. My first was when I interned for Nightly News. Wow. Brian Williams agreed to come on my radio show up at Wagner. That's that we crazy. Had. So we did a half hour interview in his office, which he was such a, a down to earth, nice, nice guy. That's awesome. And it was a lot of fun. That had to be something you'll never forget. Yeah, Great. it was incredible. So now you're in Wagner. You're pursuing your career. You're learning. When did everything come together when you were in college? Really my sophomore year. My freshman year, I, I lived up at Wagner all four years. I wasn't that involved. Sophomore year, I started getting more involved in the college. Got it. Student government, orientation coordinators, writing for their paper, The Wagnerian. Wanting, one of the things that Wagner focused on was this idea of community engagement right. and wanting to give back to the community. Right. And C does a fantastic job as that as well as part of their Catholic identity and the Holy Name Laser Charity, all the great work that they do in the community. But it was really up at Wagner where this focus on community engagement led to thinking ideas, how to give back, which eventually led down to the Minty Awards creation. So now let's focus exclusively on the Minties. So for anyone listening or watching that doesn't know what it is, it means you live under a rock. We'll let that go. <laughs> but besides that, tell us what it is and basically what it has become since inception. So the Minty Awards is the annual award ceremony for our high school theater productions here on Staten Island. All six of our Catholic high schools participate. And it is really one of my favorite nights of the year. And it started back in 2010 when I was in law school. My okay. first semester of law school where I should have been practicing, uh, rehearsing, yeah. that's a theater uh -huh. person to me, where I should have been studying <laughs> right. for torts and contracts, I was creating this nonprofit. 
that my friend Tanya, who I'd mentioned was the choreographer at C, she was the director at St. John Villa, and was mentioning that in Pennsylvania, where her friends are in the Lehigh Valley, they have what's known as the Freddie Awards. Cool. And I said, we need something like this. I think on I like your name a little better than Freddie's. <laughs> uh, I don't know who Fred was. It's I like, can't. A guy, I got a Freddie. It sounds a little creepy, right? I got a Minty. That sounds important. I got a Freddie. I'm a little scared. I was like, we need something for Staten Island for this. And it was just, I took off with the idea. We had five of our high schools participate in that first year. And I remember it was at Snug Harbor that we had it. And I really thought it was going to be a beautiful venue. Yes. The second oldest music hall in the city after Carnegie Hall. And I said, I don't know if this is going to work. It it was nice try bringing all the, the schools together, but we'll see what happens. And I remember, honest to God, Joe O'Malley, who was a St. Joseph by the Sea alum, won the first award that we handed out. Okay. And it was for a production at sea, but he had also done the Villa show that year. And so he knew almost all the students there. Right. And the way the auditorium erupted for him, it was like, wow, this is not a competition. Right. This is community building. This is right. love for your fellow actor and actresses. And I think this is now our 14th year. That has been the, the same throughout. Yeah, we hand out awards, but it's not about the awards. It's about coming together as a community, about showcasing and highlighting students and the arts where, unfortunately, in a lot of places, the arts don't get as much focus as some of the other programs do in schools. And it was a way just to recognize these students and, in the course, assist their programs. This year, we're going to cross the $150,000 mark of giving back to our schools, which... Thanks to so many tremendous uh, donors, we've been able to up our monetary and awards Now talk about year. that, giving back. So when you win the Minty, it yes. comes with scholarship, it comes with financial assistance. So for the, it goes back for the school's performing arts program. Understood. When we started, the school that won the St. Genesius Award for Best Musical would right. go home with a monetary prize. Then it became each school... Still, the winning school would get more money, 5000 right. Each school would win 1000 And now we're at a point where... Each school is going home with at least twenty five hundred dollars each year. That's back fantastic, to their and that's going back to help enhance their programs, whatever yes, they need. Absolutely, and we don't just focus on the ceremony. We also have right. our Christmas cabaret uh, at Lorenzo's that we do, which is just all the kids come together, and it's early enough in the school year where they may not know students from other schools, right. so they're coming together, making new friends, and just performing because these kids just love to perform. And I always say majority of our students are not going to go to Broadway. They're not going to be in Hollywood. Right. They're going to lawyers, doctors, educators, nurses, whatever profession. Uh, but it's the tools that they take from their theater Absolutely. days that help them succeed in whatever field. Well, it's that the same way when we have the athletic folks who come on who have been with us, and they're saying that the kids aren't all going to go to the NFL. They're not all going to play Major League Baseball, but they're going to use the tools that they've gained through the sport to continue on. But unlike those sports, or excuse me, I should say, in your case, before the Minties, unlike sports like basketball, football, and baseball, who have all-star teams, Fugazi Bowls, all these things to highlight the achievements of the kids, you created this that's giving them that opportunity. So you're like the all-stars of performing arts, right? In other words, if you've made it there, you make it anywhere, right? (laughs) Essentially, in other words, you're giving them a platform beyond the walls of their school and beyond their program, and you should be commended for that because it's something that the community is very proud to be a part of. I know it's a very well-attended event, and at the end of the day, you're giving these kids an extra stage to showcase themselves. And have you ever had, and not to put you on the spot, but have you ever had any of the kids that have gone through the Minty Awards or kids that you've known in the past go on to a Broadway or anything like that? We have a few now, actually. One that was made her Broadway debut before she even went into high school, Annalise wow. Scarpacci, who was in A Christmas Story and Matilda on Broadway and was the daughter in Mrs. Doubtfire. Wow. And she's just fantastic and wonderful. And we also have Phil Colgan, who was on Hamilton, and now he was a associate choreographer for New York that just ran on Broadway and is now in the play And Juliet. And, and there's so many that, if not on Glad Broadway, they're doing regional work. They're doing behind the scenes. Nick Buckholtz, who is a St. Joseph by the Sea guy, is working for Lincoln Center Theater as Very a press associate. So even if they're not on stage, they're still involved, involved. in the industry. Well, I'm glad it didn't just go, I said, <laughs> is there, like, no, no one's ever really gone on to do anything. They're just, they're just having a good time with their kids. <laughs> so I'm glad I asked that question because, yes, in fact, they are going on to do bigger and better things. When we were at the St. George on that first Sunday of June, we have over 1,000 people in the theater, and it really is so supportive. The competitive element is not there. It's about highlighting, about showcasing our students. You're giving them a platform, and it's being utilized in the correct way, which is very important. 
So now you're in law school, not studying to be a lawyer. You're building a nonprofit and building the community and enhancing, you know, the lives and, and dreams of young adults all across the borough. Let me tell you this, because also the, go go, going back to not just our current students, because one thing that I found when we started the Minties was there's such a tremendously rich history of theater in our high schools that part of what I also saw my job was to honoring and recognizing all those people that had come before us. And so this year we're actually celebrating its 60 years of theater in our high schools on Staten Island. That's interesting. So what we're looking to do is a, a honor each first show at every high school. You got and, some research to and do. And so I, we've done you that already. Like, Good I, for you. <laughs> you got some research to do, buddy. That doesn't sound too easy to find. But but we still have people. We have cast members from those shows that are just so excited to talk about what those days meant to yeah. them and their directors and their choreographers and the friendships, relationships. Walking around with flashlights had. and black robes. Right? What were they doing 60 years ago? What, they didn't have anything like we have today, right? It's not like that. No, they did have the like 25-piece student orchestras at the time. Wow. Yes. Okay. You had to make it up somewhere, right? <laughs> you weren't making it up in stage and production. I that guess you true. were able to make it up on the, the musical side. Law school, building a nonprofit, building community. We're in Wagner High School, uh, excuse me, Wagner College. Where where does politics come in? Where, where does the pursuit of being the youngest sitting judge in New York State, where does that come from? So after law school, I went to work at a firm in Manhattan, Mendes and Mount, which okay. actually has a lot of Staten Island connections yeah, to it. Of course it Because does. why would it not? Right. And I was loving that job. But during that time, I also started teaching at Wagner College in their sociology and, and theater departments and was involved with the Mentees, with other nonprofits in the Wings Theater Grace Foundation. I thought, I'm doing all of this for Staten Island and my extracurriculars. Right. I want to focus my career on Staten Island. I want to bring my legal practice here and help my community, help my neighbors. Yeah. So I left Mendes and Mount in 2018 to come to a firm here on Staten Island. And that's where I started being able to work, appear before the judges, meet now future colleagues of mine. Right. And it was there where I where I reconnected with uh, our friend Justice Lantry, yep. who, who also preceded me two years earlier at St. John's Law. So it's a very interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> we all got to go out and have a drink one night. We got to figure, figure this out because something's missing there somewhere. I just can't put it together. And then I guess at the end of 2019, there was this opportunity uh, to come up to to be a court attorney to the newly elected Judge Bob Helbach in civil court. Right. And I applied for that position and happily say that I've been his court attorney for the last four years. And when the opportunity to run this year opened up, it was just something that I couldn't pass up. Absolutely not. And I could say this because I wear multiple hats. You, you ran a good campaign, a clean campaign. There were no low blows, nothing. It was good to see anyone from C who has been in a position to be elected. We've had several. We've always run good campaigns, and I think that means something. It's a testament to where you came from. St. Joe's kind of gave you some values that you kept in you even while you were running a political campaign, which could get grimy, right? Let's just, let's I really just, didn't have anyone to attack. Well, so. I wasn't going to say that. You're not supposed to give it away. <laughs> what if they didn't know? Now they're going to know. It was a hard-fought race. <laughs> Even if you are unopposed, you don't just become that. You don't just get the nod. You had to go through the process on the back end of dealing with and meeting with everyone, going through the GOP processes and all that stuff. So talk about all of those situations and processes and then how it led up to election night and describe the feeling. Everyone from the beginning was just so encouraging. We All the electeds from the first time I went to them to ask for support were just tremendous, offered any help every step of the way that I needed. And we'll always be grateful for that support and all the other stakeholders. You said we've put some wonderful people into politics yeah, from C. Vinny Ignizio, who was tremendous help. Somehow he always has friend. to make it on here. Well, we always have to say his name. It's unbelievable. As Well, I'll have to <laughs> bring him up to Lanchy. Uh -huh. I have yeah, to yeah. Uh, surpass that number a few times. It's, it's, it shows the importance that you have... Former Councilman Ignizio, Councilman Borelli, Justice Lantry. From St. Joe's, you say you're from St. Joe's by the Sea, that means something because right. you know that they have the same values, the same background, the same education. That really goes a lot when you're seeking uh, support and, and when you need advice and, and help along the way. So, absolutely. That definitely was an asset. Talk about looking back, how you think C helped form you into the person that you are today. Well, like I said, I met my wife. That's great. And I think that's the, the greatest thing that, that C gave me. It was December 3rd, 2002. Look at and you, it was, remember. it was Grease Auditions. Okay. And not only introduced me to my wife, but some of my best friends that I have. 
I wouldn't have had all these. I wouldn't be a judge right now if it wasn't for St. Joseph by the Sea because I would not have been on the same path. Gotcha. And the Catholic education that it instills in young people, not just the education, the Catholic education, right. which I think is so important and which gets lost or looked down upon in today's society. I think you're, you're going into a world where your values are not necessarily the values that are in vogue. Correct. You need to be strong in I those values. I like how values. you put that. Well, <laughs> I like that. The showmanship. <laughs> and C does a, a, did a tremendous job of instilling those core Catholic values and making you proud of them and making you want to continue to practice and, and, and live out a, a good Catholic life. So one of the things we asked Judge Lantry when he was here, because he was one of the first alum on the show, was as an alum and now as an elected official, what do you think or what's something that people who are listening or watching who may be alum, what can we do to, to reinvigorate the alumni spirit? C does a, a tremendous job and, and all the improvements that you are talking about. I, I could not believe it. I see them on Facebook. I right. see them on, on SI Live and, and everything. But seeing it in person, you really can't believe what Where everyone has done right. to that school. So I think any alumni should take a, a step into that school and see how it's really been transformed. Because you are always getting a great education. Now you're getting a great education in a type of environment that I don't think most colleges Correct. look like that. So if anyone's listening or watching and they just happen to be scrolling through and thought either you or me were handsome when they were scrolling and stopped and are listening, what's something you'd say to St. Joe, say about St. Joe's to parents who have kids who maybe are in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, or even parents of current kids, right? Because we all know that the, par the kids aren't really talking to their parents in high school, right? It, just, it is what it is. So what's something that you could say to those parents about St. Joe's? I think just going back to what I said a few moments ago, in a world that's constantly changing, uh, you know that you're getting a traditional Catholic education at St. Joseph by the Sea. And I know that's important to so many people, and you'd never have to worry about that with C. Well said. Now, what does the future hold for you? So I know you're not allowed to endorse that, right? There's a whole rule book, I understand. The next, let's just give me five and 10 years out. What are your aspirations and hopes with your new appointment and new career? Sure. I guess just donning the black robes come January 1. It's a responsibility that I take seriously, knowing that a decision you have is going to really directly affect somebody's yeah. life, whether it, they, I'm assigned in civil, especially criminal or family court. So definitely making sure that I'm being the best judge that I could be. But also, come May, we're going to be welcoming a little baby Pinto into our home. So oh, bless. Good yes, features. it's going to be a busy next year for Good me. Good for you. Oh, my God. See, I didn't tell you that before, and I wanted real that reaction That was real reaction. Shot. Good for you. <laughs> if the mics weren't here, I'd give you a hug. I'll give you a hug later. <laughs> God bless you. That's great. Congratulations. Thank now you. it starts, right? That's yes. It. But, but that's awesome. So your hands are going to be tied in multiple ways. Yes. <laughs> which is good because it's all in positive things. So now are we to assume that the future is going to hold a St. Joseph by the Sea slot for... Yeah, hopefully continue the family tradition <laughs> down the line. Perfect. Your Honor, we've had a great conversation. Congratulations once again on, on the baby. That's fantastic news. I can't believe we broke that here on Viking Vibes. And that's, this <laughs> I is hope be I tough. told everybody in my family before this, this is going to be tough to beat. I don't even know where to go with this information. But before we close, is there anything else, any parting words that you'd like to share with our audience? On one of the endorsement association interviews that I did while I was running... I was trying to think of what they could try and ask me, what they could try and stump me with, and all this and that. Digging for dirt. Yeah. And the question that they started out the, the interview was with, we hear you really love Staten Island. Tell us about that. And I was really caught off guard. And I think if I could be remembered for one thing, it would be for really loving Staten Island. It's people. It's community. It is really unlike any other place. And I think sometimes we take it for granted, but we are just so incredibly blessed to have this close-knit community that stems from, from high school days, to those bonds that are so strong and continue throughout life. And I don't think there are a lot of other places out there like that. So really, it's, it's a tremendous community, and I'm very grateful to have been given this opportunity by the people of Staten Island, and I look forward to serving them in this new role. Staten Island proud. And I'm like, I'm a diehard Staten Island. I love it. I, I, I don't care. People make fun of it, people do. But you know what? When something goes wrong, something happens, even people that your neighbor three doors down that you don't really talk to, something happens, they're going to be the first one there to help you. Absolutely. And, and you see it time and time again that Staten Island always comes together and helps each other and raises the community up. So, 
And the, I think the best part of the entire campaign was the Columbus Day weekend at Mount Loretto. The yeah. amount of people that I got to meet, it was wonderful. And it just shows how great this island is to come out for those types of events and just want to be out, meet new people, and just enjoy life. We are happy that you're here. We can't believe that you shared that news-breaking <laughs> alert with us here first here on Viking Vibes. Give me, where can people learn more about the Minties? Give me the, the handles, sure. the socials. The Minties, www.minties.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We have not made it into TikTok yet. All right, that's, that's fine. That's Fair enough. Above my pay grade. But at least anyone listening or watching can go learn more about that organization. Absolutely. That and we are trying to create an entire catalog of every show that have been that was done by all our schools. Wow. And we've been had great success with some schools getting programs, photographs from shows going back 60 years. So any Viking Players alum that are watching right now, submit your photos and your uh, memorabilia and programs to the Minty Awards because we're going to have a, a lot of fun celebrating 60 years this year. Perfect. Looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to seeing our previous guest, uh, the Honorable Judge Lantry, and telling him that we now have someone younger than him <laughs> who is the youngest sitting judge uh, in New York State. So once again, we thank you for being with us. Anyone who is listening or watching, we thank you for tuning in. We encourage you to Follow us at Viking Vibes. We encourage you to hit the like button, the share button, share this content out there. Subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. And of course, visit josephc.org to learn more about St. Joe's and all the good things that are going on there. I'm Anthony Rapp, and that's a wrap. 